So, hey everyone, welcome to our team training tonight. Um, I'm Kelly France, and I'm also, I've got Julie Cruz joining us tonight, and we are going to be talking about how to take better pictures and videos. So, we're broken it up into two sections. Um, I'm gonna be starting with pics like a pro, and then Julie will jump on in 20 minutes and share her portion for 20 minutes. So I'm literally going to set my timer so that we can stay on track here. Um, so let's get started. So I'm gonna share my screen because I've got a nerdy PowerPoint for you. <laughs> um, because yeah, it's just easier to explain it with photos. So can you guys see my, um, my screen? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. All right, well, Let's dive in. I can't see my screen. That's weird. Does this, does this slide say anything? There we go. Picks like a pro. Okay. <laughs> so you, I'm so excited to talk about this topic. You guys, I used to be a photographer for, for 13 years. And so I'm super passionate about photography, but um, now I, I use my passion for Instagram photos and just family photos that I take and nail fees. So um, that's where my creative juices flow. And so, but you don't need to be a pro to take pretty pics. So I'm gonna talk to you about um, different tips. But first the key is if you're not having fun, you're not doing right. I say that all the time and I mean it. I'm, I'm all about the fun um, and for me, Social media is so fun because it's a creative outlet. Like I love being able to, um, you know, take nice photos and edit them. I get lost in the editing, you guys. Um, so here are, and, and one of the great things about Color Street, you guys, <laughs> is that you can look like a hobo and still get rad pics. So this picture here of me with my hair gnarly. I mean, that is an awful picture of me. Um, that is me in that same outfit on the right. You see the jean jacket and the sandals and my awesome nails. Well, that was my face <laughs> and that was my hair. And that was also the end of the month, which I think we all understand last day of the month. Everybody looks like a hobo, right? But that's what I love about color street is you don't have to look fancy. You can just show your nails. So, um, it's one of the perks guys. So good take, but good picks take time. And so I'm gonna break it down into five steps um, on taking good photos. And so we're gonna talk about styling the photo shoot and don't get overwhelmed about that. Don't say, oh, well, I don't have any style. You don't have to have style. It's really about the composition and stuff. Um, composing the pictures, picking your favorite pictures, editing the pics and posting the pics. So here we go, let's dive in. Let's talk about styling the photo shoot, okay? Um, that doesn't, I think that when, you, when I say style the photo shoot, I'm guessing that that makes you be like, oh my gosh, I have to do all this prep work, I have to make it fancy, no, 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 no. It, by styling the photo, I mean it's gonna take, it, like, taking an extra 10 to 30 seconds just to really look around and take time for the details, okay? So it means um, trying different poses and props, okay? It means, and it really, again, it doesn't have to take long. It means looking for red flags that could ruin the photo, like, you know, dirty, I don't know, dirty socks in the photo or like crumbs on the table or, um, you know, just a gnarly, like your hair, out of, like gnarly hair or whatever. Um, and one thing, one tip, <laughs> I was talking to a new stylist and she was like, and I was telling her, you know, it's really important that you get in the photos, which I am all about, you guys. If you want to um, really have that attraction marketing where you, on social media where people can get to know you, you've got to be in the photo. And so I was talking to her about that. And she's like, well, I don't know how you do it. Like, I don't always, you know, I'm not always looking good every day. And I'm like, girl, me neither. Here's the thing. 
Sunglasses. Sunglasses are your BFF. I have so many sunglasses and I always carry them in my purse. I have them everywhere. So if you're not wearing makeup or whatever, you just put these bad boys on and you're good, right? So carry your sunglasses with you everywhere. I get them cheap on Amazon. Um, but, <laughs> sorry, I dropped mine. But yeah, sunglasses are your BFF. And also, you know, when you're having a good hair day, take a billion pics, at, change your shirt like five times, take a bunch of pictures, just, and it really, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Seriously, it's like, I know we're all busy women. I know many of you are moms and it's crazy. You've got kids like running around, you know, maybe it's just, maybe it's just lingering in the car for like two extra seconds when your kids go in the house to get a nice selfie. Um, car lighting is amazing. <laughs> just saying, cause it has, it kind of covers like the overhead lighting and, but it gives you like some great, um, window lighting. So let's talk about the background. And I know some of this might seem basic, but you guys, I see so many photos that could be so much better with, it's all about the details. Seriously, it is all about the details. Um, and so like, here's an example of a photo. Do you see a difference between um, one and two? Obviously they Photoshopped this, um, this light post out, but look at what could have happened. How much better the photo could have been if they noticed, oh my gosh, there's a giant light post coming out of your head, um, just moving the, the, either your, the camera or the subject, just a notch could make a world of difference. Um, so really, you kind of have to train your eye just to like look, or look beyond the subject, you know? And if you're the subject, if you're taking a selfie, What's in the background? Is there a, a fan like right, right over your head that, you know, looks kind of wonky? Um, is there like a really bright light in the background that's going to distract from you? Just really watching um, what is in the background of, of the photo and removing distractions. Remove, remove, remove. Um, when I was a photographer, like a professional photographer, I would take time to you know, oh, you've got a hairband on your, on your wrist. Like, let's take that out. I, I know you don't want that in the photo. Or, oh, there's like a, a bottle of, you know, there's a, a can on the ground, like a Coke can on the ground that's litter on the ground. Let's pick it up and, and toss it aside. Let's put it, throw it in the garbage and get that out of the photo. So it's really, it's just, again, taking that few extra seconds to, number one, look around and see what else is in the background. Um, and then number two, adjusting and um, removing any distractions that you can so that the subject is really the main focus and not like all the clutter in the background. So background is huge. Um, mix it up with different backgrounds. So here's the great thing, you guys. You can take um, a nail fee with, you know, like you can take, the same nail fee, but have different backgrounds and, and have a totally different look. And you can be in the same area, but get a totally different background. So this was my daughter and I shopping on Black Friday, because we, that's like a sport for us. We love to shop. <laughs> um, so we went out on Black Friday and we both had our Christmas nails um, that we had done on Thanksgiving. And we, saw just some fun props like my daughter had these silver glitter nails on and so we found like a like that was the sidewalk the sidewalk was all glittery and I was like ooh let's take a nail fee right there so we're like the weirdos that are shopping around taking nail fees you know and this was a Christmas tree that was outside um so I just quickly got a shot there so just getting creative, that's what makes it fun is like, ooh, I like, this is kind of a fun background. I'm always like, ooh, look at that. Like, that's a cool background. I've got to take a nail fee. So always being ready to take a nail fee. Um, and some of them are going to look awesome and some of them are going to bump. And that's okay. I'm all about trying, you know, fail it till you nail it, right, guys? Um, get creative and use props. So um, this was funny. This is again on the same day, Black Friday. We were in Urban Outfitters. I went in the dressing room. I tried on these um, pajama bottoms. 
I did not buy them, but I got a rad toenail fee in them uh, in the dressing room. So um, that was fun. Don't forget to take toenail fees too. And I know feet are not the prettiest, but it's good for your customers to know that it's, it's an option, right? Um, and then this was just done in my car while my husband was driving, just um, taking a nail fee with my watch on and my jeans while he's driving. And guys, again, I took a lot of versions of those. So you'll see me like constantly like shifting, where, where does it look best, do I, you know? So trying different things. Um, this was fun. Also on Black Friday, <laughs> we were in Urban Outfitters and we were having so much fun. We're like, oh my gosh, look at all these mugs. So many mug shots. Did we buy these mugs? Um, we bought like one of them. But the, that's a great place to take nail fees is like in a mug store. <laughs> go to TJ Maxx, go to the mug section. Um, so we had fun taking nail fees here with our, so do you see how I'm still, I'm wearing the same nails in like these, um, these red, you know, I never know the names, <laughs> those red Christmassy nails, but I took different backdrops, one over my jeans, one holding a mug, one in front of the Christmas tree and got a variety of different shots. All right, let's talk about composing the photo, the pics. Composing the pics is what you see when you look behind the lens. And when I'm talking about all of this, you guys, I'm talking about your phone. I'm not talking about using a fancy camera because I never do. Mo like 99% of the photos I post are all just with my phone. I feel like that's just the most realistic way for most of us to take pictures, right? Um, kudos to you if you are using like a, a nicer camera. That's awesome. Um, so lighting, let's talk about lighting. Good light makes everything look better. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're in a well-lit area. If you're like, oh, my photo sucks, it may very well be, I would say a, like 50% or more of photos not looking good is because the lighting sucked. And so it's all about the lighting. So try to go in a well-lit area. So this was at Disneyland. It was really bright that day. Like overhead lighting at noon is like the worst light ever because you're gonna get that like, um, those raccoon eyes. It's like, it's like when you, you know, when you put a flashlight here when you're telling scary ghost stories, same effect. It's that overhead sunshine that gives you like raccoon eyes and it's just not flattering. Um, so, the best time for lighting is, oh, so using the shade, so we went in the shade for this shot and got a great shot. Um, and, and again, guys, that wasn't just one jump. That was like a whole bunch of jumps. <laughs> um, and a little trick that I, I wanna mention, for at least for iPhone users, I can't speak to the rest of you, is that when you're getting action shots, um, my daughter taught me this, my teenage daughter, um, hold down the, the button. If you hold it down, like for more than three seconds, it will take a whole bunch. So I just took seven shots right there. Um, and then you can actually, it's a, it's called a burst. And then you can actually go to the select. Now this is guys, this is all based on my current iPhone. So don't freak out if this <laughs> doesn't work for you. I'm just telling you what works for me and what works for my phone. Um, so you can go through and select the different versions of that photo and save it. So you have seven different options. So when someone is taking an action shot of you, tell them to hold the camera down. Um, even if it's a stranger, we I've had strangers take, I'm like, Hey, can you take this picture of me jumping? <laughs> and cause I have no, um, right. Um, and I'm like, just hold it down a couple times and they'll hold it down. And sometimes it'll turn out and sometimes it won't. Um, but back to lighting. So you want the best lighting for photographs if you're outside is one hour before sunrise or one hour um, before sunfall. So, um, so those are great times for lighting. But if you are indoors, lighting can work almost any time, obviously not as well at dark. Um, but you can use window lighting. I love window lighting. It is dreamy. 
Um, and I used to photograph a lot of newborns using window lighting. So you can get some really great shots of whatever it is, um, whether it's your kids, whether it's your nails, whether it's yourself um, with window lighting. In fact, I usually when I'm taking a selfie, I will go find a light, uh, a window, and pretend that this is the window right here in my hand. I will make sure my face is in front of it because it gives you like, it just lights your whole face and kind of hides your flaws and who doesn't love that, am I right? Um, also, I wanted to show you a couple ring lights that you can use. So I'm using two right now. So, um, and I also have window lighting in my office right here. You can see a little bit of the light back there. It's hitting the wall. Um, this is a ring light right here. This one can actually go, I got this on Amazon. It was around $20. I do not remember the name of it. Um, <clears throat> but this can just go on your desk. Like if you're doing live videos, you can just set it on your desk in front of, um, or to the side of you when you're doing live videos, or you can use it, you know, for photos or whatever. I generally use window lighting for selfies. But for videos, I really like these. And Julie will probably touch upon that a little bit. Um, I also have another big fat ring light on this side um, that's like, it's like this big. And that one was a little more pricey. It was around $100, but that thing is magic. How many of you guys have one of those? I mean, ring lights are, are worth it, I'm telling you. <laughs> they make you look amazing. Um, lighting is everything. Seriously though, everything. So, um, I'm going to teach you guys one little trick that I was teaching some of the girls at, um, my recent retreat and it's the palm trick. Okay. So if you learn nothing else, learn the palm trick for me. All right. So what you want to do is let's say you want to take a picture of someone right here. Okay. Your subject is going to be right here again, like, you know, facing you. So, um, yeah, so let's say the subject, I'm going to use sunglasses so you guys can visualize. So there's the subject wearing sunglasses facing me. So I uh, use your palm and you're going to like move it across the room and you're going to see how the light changes. Do you guys see how the light changes? Do you see that the lighting is better over here than it is over here? Over here, my palm is very dark. Do you see that? You guys seeing that? Um, over here, my palm is brighter. It's more well lit. And so instead of putting the subject here where they're going to not look as good, I'm going to put the subject here where the lighting is much better. Okay. So, so when you're trying to get a good photo and you're outside, well, anywhere outside, inside, um, take your palm. So it's facing you and move it around the room. And um, you'll see how the light changes. And over here, you guys see me spinning? Over here, the light, actually, no, it's not as good. So the best place for the photo is over here. And that's where you're going to put, is right here. Do you see how my palm is lighter? That's where you're going to place your subject. So, and of course, it doesn't always work that way. Because, like, if you're wanting maybe the beach or the mountains in the background, obviously, if the beach is over there, and the good lighting's over here, you know, you just work with what you've got and you can fix it in your edit editing later. But um, that's my biggest trick. Um, oh my goodness, I <laughs> this is taking too long. Okay, rule of thirds. Just want to put the subject in one of the third sections of the photo. Okay, that's just a little simple tip. You can see um, the difference when you don't want this subject to ever be in the bullseye of the photo. Angles, play around with different angles. Here's an angle. I like this picture of my daughter with in front of the Christmas tree. I literally laid on the ground and shot up at her. So play around. You can see in this newborn shoot, there are so many different angles of the mom in this room. So playing around with different angles. Um, taking a lot of pictures um, or getting one good picture requires lots of pictures. I am a digital hoarder. I currently have 54,667 photos on my phone. So it's a problem. <laughs> but let me show you. Can you guys guess how many photos we took for this setup? Anyone guess? 
And actually, okay, so I hit my mark, but you know what, Julie? I think you and I are both going to go over our time. So I'm gonna, I'll am i do 10 more minutes, and then you can do 30 minutes. So we'll, we'll just make it an hour. Because I feel like we have a ton to cover in one hour. Does that sound good? Okay. So um, how many photos do you think we took for this just to get this one decent shot? Any guesses? I can't see your thing, but I'll just tell you. Um, 50. We took 50 photos of this one outfit and this one background. And um, we only, it didn't take forever, you guys. It took three minutes. This was at my leadership retreat last year in 2018. And when we went to Magnolia and um, I handed my phone to Avery Seagrest, who it's her birthday today. Um, and I said, okay, I just, I said, all you need to do is just snap a whole bunch of photos. I'm going to pose like a boss, just going to pose a ton. Um, and in, and she did it for like three minutes and one of them turned out. That's the thing guys. I think everyone thinks that, you know, you get magical photos with just one shot. No, 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 no. Let me show you another example. Can you guess how many photos we took for this setup? So this setup, it was funny. We were just, my family and I were just, um, we had just gone out to breakfast with some of our friends who were visiting and we said goodbye to them. We were walking down the road and I saw all these fun surfboards and I was like, Ooh, that's a good background. Guys, I'm always looking for good backgrounds. And so I was like, that's such a cute background. And I'm like, Hey Matt, I asked my husband or my daughter to take the photo. And I said, we just take a few photos of me and me and Max. And so Max got in the picture, got on my back and we took a whole bunch. We took 68 photos <laughs> in about five minutes. And this is how they turned out. So you guys can see all the, all the ones um, on the left, like all the ones that didn't turn out. You can see that I hearted my favorites. Um, and this is the one that I liked the best. So again, it takes a lot to get that one good photo. Um, my problem is I should delete them after I choose my favorite and I don't. <laughs> okay, let's talk about editing pics. Um, welcome to my rabbit hole. This is where I can get lost easily. Like I, there was one time where I spent like three hours on a plane just editing photos and I edited maybe like 10 photos. But I'm not saying you have to spend that long editing your photos. I just have so much fun doing it. It is so fun for me. It's a creative outlet for me. That doesn't, and that might not be the case for everyone. I just think it's fun to make your photos pop. So let's talk about different editing apps. Again, this is all for, uh, for phones, all for mobile. Um, obviously the Instagram app, um, PicTap Go is another editing app. Beauty Plus is a great one. Visco, Facetune. These are all ones that I've used before. Um, and sometimes I'll use a variety of them. I don't always, I don't just have one that I use. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying you have to use all these guys, but I, I wanted you to, to see all the options and find one that you love. Um, Snapseed is another one. Lightroom and the Tezza app. And I listed them in the order of how easy they are to use. So if you're brand new to editing photos on your phone, then you might want to start with just editing them in the Instagram app or using PicTap Go. If you're like more advanced, um, then you can jump into Lightroom or Snapseed or whatever. Um, so let's talk about each app. So the first, um, app is the Instagram app. So when you upload, I don't know if you guys knew this, and, um, but when you upload a photo to Instagram, when you click the plus sign and you add a photo, um, and then you click next, you can, there's filters, but I don't love the filters. I think they look a little too filtery. So I don't use the filters. I, I click on the edit button instead. The edit button has different options to edit a photo. So there's adjust, there, I mean, there's brightness, contrast, warmth, saturation, highlights, shadows, sharpen, etc. So um, you can just really make a photo pop 
in a really simple, quick way by using the Instagram app. So sometimes um, I'll just sharpen it, I'll add a teeny bit of contrast, I'll add some warmth, and then I'll click next and post it to Instagram. Or you can download it. You don't even have to post it in Instagram. There's a little arrow key that lets you download it to your phone. So that's a really simple app to edit in. Um, another app is PicTap Go, and I've been using this one for years too. Um, there's a ton of different options on PicTap Go, and it's really cool because it will show you in like a grid how your photo, so, let, so this is your photo, how it looks with the different options. And um, it has some really basic options like brightening it, adding contrast, and then, it, and then as you scroll down even more, there's more filter-like options. So PicTap Go is a pretty simple one um, to use to edit your photos and to get just like a clean, classic look. I, I recommend, you know, you don't wanna go too crazy with your photos and filters. Um, you want it to look kind of somewhat timeless, you know, because you don't wanna look back and say, oh my gosh, that was when it was really trendy to have like as photographers, we talk, we joke about the year of the yellow when like all the photos were had that yellow hue and stuff. So, um, you know, kind of try to keep it simple. Okay, the next app is called the Beauty Plus app, and this one is magic. I use this one for a lot of um, self like headshots or selfies because um, it can soften your skin. Um, it's just subtle. You can. Um, you can tone your skin, which I really like, um, and just the, it has a lot of different options there. So, um, and plus it has filters, plus it has basic edits. So the Beauty Plus app is pretty sweet. Um, Visco, Visco is really fun. It has a lot of kind of vintagey, um, film-like apps. I've been using Visco for like ten years. Um, so yeah, you can see how there's different options here. So if you're wanting more of like a muted look or like a film type look, there's tons of options in Visco. Um, so, and then Lightroom. Lightroom is a little more advanced. So if you are a beginner, I don't recommend this. <laughs> But there are a lot of Lightroom presets out there. And I'm sure as you are on Instagram, you've probably seen ads for them or you've seen, you know, popular influencers who sell presets. And um, they're pretty trendy right now to, to use Lightroom presets. Now, Lightroom, I used it as a photographer. I used it on my computer. Now they have it an app for mobile, which is sweet because you can do all those fancy edits on your an app on your phone um, and you can use a preset now if you guys are like what the heck is a preset basically it's kind of like a filter it's going to it's like a set of steps she just got off maybe I should go into my my side let me see if she responds what just happened are you there Julie Julie, can you hear me? It stopped. Okay. Where are you? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm almost done anyways. I'm so glad that we didn't lose it. I was like, where did everyone go? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically with Lightroom, I'm just going to, I'm not going to share my screen because we're almost done, but um, you can, with presets, they're kind of like filters. It's just a set of steps that um, you get to get a certain look. So there's different looks like light and airy or like the tan and, and um, muted. There's all sorts of different looks. So honestly, you can go down the rabbit hole of Lightroom presets. And I mean, I spent like an entire night one night just like buying presets. Um, I have ones from Jay Gurley, Travel in Her Shoes, Tezza, um, presets by Mel. So Really, my biggest tip, you guys, before I turn the time over to Julie, regarding uh, if you want to go down the Lightroom rabbit hole, the preset rabbit hole, 
is to um, find one and learn to tweak it and rock it. So, um, so yeah, I, I would say just because I bought a whole bunch. When I went down the rabbit hole, I bought a whole bunch. Are you guys still there? Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> now I'm like paranoid. I got a whole bunch of presets and then finally I decided I'm just gonna pick one and I'm gonna learn to rock that preset. And so that's the key, honestly. It's picking the one and just really learning to tweak it because they don't always work on different lighting, you know, different color tones and stuff like that. So I've just, I just use one and learn to rock it and tweak it. So that's my biggest tip to you guys. Um, so that's pretty much everything I was going to say. There's also a Teza app that you guys can play around with. My, my daughter loves that one and it's free. Um, and that one has a lot more tan, muted, grainy um, lo uh, looks to it. So you just really have to play around, guys. It's, it, it's a lot of trial and error, but um, eventually you'll start to see what you like and what works for you and your brand and and it's fun. So let's turn the time over to Julie um, to, to jump in on uh, video, taking better videos. Okay. Hey guys. So uh, first of all, my big ring, my, I have like this big light right there, see? But it's faced the wrong way because I'm trying to show you guys this. So pretend like I still have light on my face, but I don't. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, how am I going to show all this? So, um, the first thing I want to say is that I just started doing videos recently. So this is all still really new for me. And I'm telling you that because it is something that you can learn quick too. Okay. So it's not just something that I have learned and nobody else can do it. Um, you guys can do it too. So a couple of things and today I'm going to focus today's training on taking videos with your phone. I've done another one where I did it with a camera, but honestly, you guys, the majority of you are going to be having a phone. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. So the first thing I, I want to challenge you guys to do is take a video every single time you change your nails out. That's what I said that I was going to do. And, um, I did. <laughs> I've done it every single time and it sounded scary to me, but I thought the only way that I'm going to get better at this is if I do a lot of videos. And so I do. <clears throat> um, and I, uh, I do use a camera now, but when I first started, I used my phone only. So if you're using a camera, which mine is on a tripod, can you guys see? Yeah, is on a tripod and it's has like a macro lens. So it gets up really close. Um, but if you're using a camera, your, I use um, iMovie to edit, okay? So the part that I feel like everybody gets nervous about is the editing. And if you're new to it, I, like honestly, right? Everybody's shaking their heads. Yes, the editing is so scary, right? And for me too, my husband is like a editing pro. He's like, honestly, works for our church and it does all the video. He's like, so great. And I, he wouldn't even tell me how to do things, you guys. He was like, well, if you want to learn, you're going to have to Google it. And so I really have been like, what? I know it's, it's dumb, but <laughs> taught me like one or two things. But then the rest, I was like, I don't know how to edit. And so I was literally looking up YouTube videos and trying to learn how to edit. So I just say do the same thing that he told me to do because I know for me, I'm a hands-on learner and that's going to be best. Okay. But a couple of tips, um, that I want you to think about while you're making videos and things that maybe you haven't thought about before one being music. Okay. I, my very first photo or video that I took on my phone, I edited with, um, pick play post. Okay. It's an app. And their music selection is very limited, right? So I, chose this like we still laugh about it but it's like this honky tonk music right it's terrible but that's what i chose um for the music and t that video has been viewed 16,000 times okay i'm telling you that because that was on my phone it was not with a light box which i'm going to show you it was on like my coffee table it was all about the angle at which you could see my fingers and 
that was really it because the video the, the music was really terrible okay there was no talking in it and typically I don't even do talking in my videos if you guys have seen them I try and tell a story and that is the one tip that my husband did give me he said make sure that when you are um, when you're I'm changing the view hold on. when you're doing these videos to tell a story and so I think about that every time so like let me try and show you guys this this light box that i have okay so this is an amazon light box can you see that sorry if it's small um this it's pretty large honestly it's pretty big but this is what i have used now it's like 120 dollars on amazon if you don't have that kind of money i say just use a coffee table like i did as long as you have good lighting if by a window or using a ring light this is a ring light that i bought i tell my team about um, and it holds your phone, okay, like this. Holds your phone, opens up. It, you can, you even have, if you have those giant phones, it'll still work. Um, telling me in my face, okay. Um, and then it has like a cord that hooks up to your computer. And this was thirteen dollars, you guys. There's no reason you can't afford a thirteen dollar thing. Um, yeah, someone's saying you can get a film board. Get a film board if you don't have a light box. Whatever you need. I like I like crisp white backgrounds, but it's totally up to you guys. So I'm gonna turn this thing on. Julie, I brought a marble cutting board and <laughs> use that for my yeah uh, before. Just get creative. Yeah, they even have like now these like really cheap faux marble boards that you can use. Like they're really cheap. This, this, if you want to, if you want to make videos a lot, then it might be worth investing inside in a big light box and trying to take pictures. And I like doing that, but it's totally up to you guys. So anyway, this ring light has a light and it, you can change the light according, like, so that's all like yellow. I can't remember what they call that kind of like yellow light, all white light, and then a mix of both. And I typically like that. Even with a lit light box, I still like more light. When you're using a camera, you can edit or you can change the ISO and then it makes it brighter. But when you're using a phone, it's a little bit harder to do that. And so what I do, oops, is let's go to my camera. I don't know if you guys can see this far. Um, yeah, we can. If you go to the video, like you're seeing all the stuff, like it looks pretty bright to me, but if you want, if you just tap, tap anywhere, and this is on an iPhone guys, I don't know if you have another phone, but tap on there, there's like a little light. It looks like a sun. You can move that up and it's going to automatically brighten your photo before or your video you can do this with photos too though before you're even pressing record so look how bright that is it looks perfect like really bright so when you're going to take a video so i'm just going to press record now you're going to have it if you're using this thing which is 13 bucks i think everybody should use it you are going to Think about what story you want to tell first. I'm sorry that I'm dark and bright and you can't see anything from me, but I have done a few videos to give you guys ideas, showing what my sample looks like, okay? Showing what my sample looks like, opening it up, applying one, one nail. Um, so I might have that in the background so people can see that, you know? Um, there's another one. Or if I'm gonna be doing my nails, here's Moon River. If I'm gonna be doing my nails, then I'm gonna to want to have you know, little things that I might be using. So a file or like a cuticle pusher, or whatever I'm going to use. And I keep it so that you can like right now, I wish I could show you guys right now. You can't really see what's in that, in that. So you want to make sure it's all going to show up in this little thing. The cool part about having a phone too, side note, is that if you're going to upload it to Instagram, it's basically already in the format for IGTV, which is, like you can do up to a 10 minute video. So doing it with your phone is nice because I have to like edit it extra when I'm using my real, real camera. So anyway, I like to make sure that everything is set up, so you guys can see, set up inside of this little window, okay? So this might be like a little bit in the background, but so you can see, or I'll just leave it out so that it's nice. Um, and then when I'm, when I'm thinking about the story, this is, this is one other tip my husband gave me. He said, be intentional when you are doing each step. So if I'm wanting to show this, I'm thinking about what the video is going to look like edited in my head while I'm doing it and maybe talking through it in my mind, not really out loud, but you can because you can always edit it out, out later. Like thinking about, okay, how is this going to look? Now, right now there's like the, the ring light, so I'll, I'm going to turn this off. You 
can still use this thing even if you're not using the light and then brighten it up here and then making sure that you could press where you want it to focus okay and then showing it so i'm usually like okay people are going to want to see what this is they're looking at the package then i'll turn it around and i'll show what the name is and sometimes i'll like use my finger and kind of go over the instructions i guess i'll use this one too eventually so so then i show i'm like oh i guess we're gonna use one for the team girl oh maybe i'll have it so i like to like take things out and stop so i'm pausing here for a second so people can see you know, this is what they're going to see in the video. So it makes your job editing later so much easier if you're doing these little things right away. So I am still actually recording this funny. Um, putting it down like that. I always like to show this because people are like, what is that? And then showing that there's like a little nail file. Okay. And then pulling out the nail set. And then showing that it comes. So then I'll open it up. I'm not going to open it up because I'm not going to use this right now, but I would open it up and I like to like push them apart from each other. So people are seeing there's eight different ones. You can say a lot without saying anything. Okay. So your videos are going to, you're going to want to do that in your videos. So I pull them apart. Then I'm showing how I'm, how, how they're fitting across my nails and doing like each thing. And when I'm pulling them apart, I'm exaggerating the movement. So I'm like, okay, holding it there still and then pulling it apart and showing exactly how that works. Okay. And then I like, I personally, you can do however you want, but I like to set out the nails that I'm going to use so people can see these are the ones that are going to go on my hands. And then I go through the whole process. Now you can, um, like I said, you can edit in iMovie even has an app. If you want to use that, I personally haven't, I've always used it on, um, uh, I'm reading a comment. Um, I've always just used it on my computer, but pick play post is a super easy one. I don't think it's free, but uh it is worth it if that's what you're going to be using primarily um okay let me see so you're like like i said the lighting matters um editing apps pick play post um and like i said i'll all uh i'll have a little like link probably what kelly can do too is have a little uh write-up for like the products that we're talking about right now um <laughs> Because I know that some of you guys are gonna be like, what? So I'll write it all and then and then put it inside of her team page. And then um, the music app. Okay, like I was talking about earlier, I had some honky tonk music on my first video. And I would say the majority of people who are watching a video on like Instagram are probably not using sound anyway. I don't hardly ever watch anything with sound anyway. So I don't think it mattered as much, but it just makes me laugh. But you have to be careful on what, and I didn't know this in the beginning, you have to be careful on what music you're using because Facebook will flag copyrighted music. So I use now an app called, or a, a website called Epidemic Sound, and it has a 30 day free trial, okay? After that, I think it's $10 a month or something, but you guys, you can download a ton of music within 30 days and just use it for later. So I did, I, I'm, I used the, um, membership cause I forgot to cancel it like always. And, um, so, uh, if you get that, get it, you can choose music that doesn't have any words in it and it's perfect for your videos. So that's what I mean by like telling a story. Your music is going to tell the story of what you're trying to accomplish in a video. Your, uh, what you're showing, I like to be up like really close so people get like a good view of what my nails look like. That's probably the number one question when people watch my videos are like, how did you get that angle? And I'm like, honestly, you guys, it's just about, it's just about getting close and what, and thinking about it and looking at, like, I don't ever do a video without looking through my phone or the viewfinder on the camera. So that's all I'm looking at the whole time. Like, how is this going to look when I'm done? Like getting up close and doing that. So even if you're using a coffee table or whatever. Um, what else? Um, oh, Julie, is that clipped onto, what is, yeah. that? is it a clip? Yeah. And it's just clipped onto that. Like, this is a desk. I just brought in a desk from out, out there. It's like clipped to a desk. Do you see okay. this? Yeah. So this is $13. I have that one and sometimes like it's I'll hard. Have too chunky of a counter or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. I like the one that you just showed too, but it, like, it doesn't, does that one hold your phone? The little, the little no, ring light? And they don't, I love that that one tips. Yeah. yeah. So this one has like a little, uh, 
remote too for Android or iOS. So if you're wanting to take a picture, cause I use this uh, light thing for pictures too. So another tip that I like, and if your phone is really heavy, this might not hold it well either. I have this too. Oh my gosh, can you guys see? It's like an actual, this is cheap you guys. Oh my gosh. It's just like a stand with, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you guys what this is, but it's like a, it holds your phone. This is super sturdy. This is not going anywhere. It's Joby. So it's, this is like 10 bucks for the stand and then Joe, a Joby top thing. I'll give you guys the links if you want. That's what I usually use if I'm going to use my phone for lives or whatever, right? everything. Um, so I would say do something different with all your videos. Don't just do a full application every time. Nobody's going to want to watch a video that is 10 minutes long, 20 minutes long. Nobody's going to sit there and watch it that long. I try to keep my videos, my long videos to four to five minutes. And we all know it takes a little longer than that to do your nails, right? But I'm editing and fast forwarding and like showing only a few nails and then showing the end product. So think about those things as you're doing your video. I also did one recently showing how I remove them. So it doesn't always have to be your application, but like, oh, I use, you know, I use um, Mineral Fusion and I, I put it inside of my Target little scrubber thing instead of the acetone. And so I showed them in a video how I, re how I removed them. Okay, so think about that. People want to know, see how easy it is to apply them, but they also want to um, know how to take them off. Okay, so showing that is always good. Um, I typically edit, when I'm editing an iMovie, I'll edit, do a four to five minute one, and then I'll go back and just take off it's asking about the scrubber, I'll show you. Um, I'll just take out like some of the bulk of the photo and then it, make it into a one minute video for Instagram because I try and put my videos on Instagram as well and I encourage you to do them too. And honestly, you guys, if it terrifies you, the only way you're gonna get better like anything else is to make more of them. And so that's why I told myself I'm never putting on a nail set unless I have a video and I broke my promise. <laughs> but that's because my daughter was in the hospital. She was in the hospital. And so we, we put on our, our 4th of July nails and I was like, they will forgive me. It's okay. So I love that. That's a great way to stay accountable to like yeah. getting content out there. Yes. You're never going to get better unless you try it. And if you're, you know, make, making the light, like some of my first videos, the light was really dark and I was like, Oh, I hate this. Like I, I want it to look crisp and bright and um, so, you know, some of your videos aren't going to be as good as others. And I, t I told everybody, I told everybody on my Facebook before I made my first video, my first official edited video, I was like, I'm going to learn this. And I, it, it helped keep me accountable to make more because I was telling everybody like, this is my first video ever. And everybody was so supportive. It's nice. Um, I don't and know where I my bet, scrubber thing. I bet it helps you. Once you get your whole setup, it's like, oh, okay, I just do my nails here. It's not right. like you have to go set it up again. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah. just have like a little spot, I feel like that that's like a huge tip for anything is like once you have your little setup, then it's like it's automated and you just can, you know. I have this up on my, like it's, it's on a table that's next to my desk like all the time. So like my whole office office could be a total disaster, which it is most of the time. I'll be real. And I can go take a video in my light box and everything looks perfect. So I don't ever have to worry. This is what I'm talking about. It's a like container. It says it's like $2 at Target has hundred percent acetone in it, but it has like scrubbing brushes on the inside. This one's gross. Don't judge me. Can you see? Tip Let me it see. A little more. Can you tip it? There you go. See? Oh, that's cool. So I just dump the acetone out. Probably shouldn't admit that, but I dump the acetone out in the toilet. Probably, I don't know if you're supposed to, but whatever. And then I put mineral fusion inside of this. More. Okay, so I showed that in a video. So think about like your VIPs wanna know how you're doing things too. So this doesn't have to just be for like potential customers. Do videos for your, your VIPs for your team, whatever. Like my team uses all my videos, even if I tell them they should make their own. But I mean, I don't care. Anyway, those are my tips. I think uh, if you guys have any more specific questions, you can ask me. It's hard to show this whole thing like on um, a Zoom video because it's like my computer and I'm trying to like, you know, show you. Yeah. But yeah, 
Thanks. And you guys, side note for what Kelly was talking about, I use a preset for Lightroom and it's called Light and Airy. That's the name of it. And it's amazing. So try that one if you guys want. It makes your photos look crisp and beautiful no matter what. Yeah, there's so many good ones out there. You really just have to like get on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Take take a night, get on Pinterest, find your preset. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. That was amazing. Um, I love that it was, you know, it was simple. It's, it's just really getting the setup and then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Um, do it. Commit to it. Yeah. And same with, um, you know, photos. Like it's funny to look back at my first nail fees two years ago, you know, and I'm like, Oh, like I have improved, like comparing myself to myself. Um, you know, don't compare yourself to anyone else but your own self. And then you can see like, oh, I'm getting, I'm starting to get better. And I'm sure Julie's uh, videos have gotten better since her first one. Like, it's all about baby steps and just feeling it till you nail it. Bam, bam, bam. Someone said, what time of day do you do your videos? You guys, since I have the light box, it doesn't matter when I do it. I just, right. Whenever I'm changing my nails, I'm like, oh, I'm doing it. So that's great. Yeah, if you're not, if you don't have a light box, then you should do it during the day. Right. All right. Um, we're going to wrap it up because we went over. <laughs> but thanks, you guys, for joining us. And um, just get out there and try it. And, um, and you will succeed eventually. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.